Next, let's work on the seating area of the amphitheater. We see it's comprised of uh, multiple sections and rows where the people can sit. And we have some curves that were developed, uh, filled in with some uh, grassy areas. And if we were to animate that, you can see we can just simply move those objects over time to show an exploded view to see the different components of that part of the project. We can also use the information management system in Formsy to extract data. Let's say we want to know how much concrete is used for the curbs. Just pick the objects that have a concrete service style that are on layer curbs, and there we have the cubic volume of each item plus the total and average. How much uh, sod do we have to order? Well, we can go in and pick all the objects that have a grass surface style that are on layer grass, and that's the total surface area. So we can use this for bill materials and extracting um, information out of your project. Now, how do we animate these objects? Well, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe animate one of these. How about the stage? Just simply set the time at zero. Use the keyframe animate tool, click on the object, and it's now an animatable object. Move the timeline, and then what you do is move the object. And you tell Form Z where that object needs to be at that point in time. So if I were to scrub the timeline back and forth, you can see Form Z automatically interpolates that object between those two keyframe positions. Now this is just one of the many ways of animating objects over time. We'll explore other ways uh, throughout the demonstration. At this point, um, why don't we go ahead and actually build part of the geometry here. Maybe take a brief look at some of the modeling features here. Uh, what we did is we started off with a 2D service area which presents the seating area. And then what we do is we want to divide that area up into each of the rows and sections uh, for the seating in the amphitheater. Now we want to give this sort of the seaside theme, so maybe this looks like a waves crashing on the beach. So what we're going to do is use the spline drawing tool uh, and actually insert uh, some spline curves into that area. So we sort of subdivide that up. We also have a series of steps uh, that are coming right down the center there. So we just draw center lines for those steps using the stair tool set the parameters that we want, click on that centerline path, and we have a 3D solid stair. Now if we want, uh, we can actually trim out the area where the stairs go through the sections uh, by using the solid stair as an actual trimming device. Uh, using the trim tool, we can trim any two types of objects. That can be two solids or two services or any combination of the two. So now we sort of further subdivided uh, those areas up where the steps are coming through. Now we move the steps down and notice that uh, we can change uh, the type of step because it's a controlled object, just like any other object in Form Z. Uh, we can go ahead and query the parameters of that, put some tiles on there, some railings, change the type of stair, the riser height. We can modify those values at any time. So as our design changes, it's very easy to go back in uh, and be able to modify that. All right. Now at this point, what I want to do is maybe uh, create a little 3D solid curb that defines the boundary of each of the seating areas. So I'll click on each of the faces. And then what I'm going to do is use the 3D enclosure derivative tool and derive a 3D enclosure around the perimeter of each of those highlighted faces. Next what I'm going to do is uh, maybe grab these sections here and I'm going to move those down in the Z direction. Same thing with the other sections in front here. Let's move those down to sort of create the stepped effect of our seating inside of the amphitheater. Now next what I want to do is uh, create uh, the actual grass that's going to be filled in inside of these curbs there. So once again I'll use the derivative tools. Um, I'll create, I'll click on the grass surface style, click on the inside outline and now I have a nice surface object. So when I use the information management I can query that and to get the cubic area of grass to fill in that section. If I want to fill it in with dirt, well, you can see I can use the derivative tools again, but I'm going to also extrude that down using the dirt surface style, and I can get a three-dimensional volume that represents the fill dirt in that curb section. Now, of course, we can see that that solid extracted down uh, doesn't quite match uh, the 3D slope of the terrain. No problem. Just use the extend tool, click on the face, and it will extend it down to match that terrain. And then we just animated those objects to then show an exploded view. In this part of the demonstration, we'll look at uh, ways that animation can be used for repetitive modeling tasks. For example, the fence post that goes around the mulch bed for the palm trees.
What we'll do is create an extruded polygon to create one of the fence posts, and then we'll animate the height over time. Now we can animate the height um, in a variety of different ways. One way we can uh, just create a sine wave controller, give it a two foot amplitude, and now we can just have that height change. And then we'll animate that uh, fence post along a path by simply clicking on the object, click on the path, and now that uh, animated post is going around that path. And we can look at a preview of that animated object at a specific interval spacing. Go to the animated preview options, set the uh, spacing that we want. And so if we were to extract that object out later, we can sort of get a preview of what that'll look like. Let's modify the sine wave value here. Instead of two feet, let's make it one foot. And you can see it updates. We can also maybe randomly rotate that post back and forth. We can uh, change the rotation or animate that by assigning a noise controller, which will randomly rotate that back and forth based on the degree that we give it. Now this is just a preview at this point. Let's turn that off and let's actually extract actual 3D geometry using the Extract tool. Set the interval spacing we want and click on the object. And Formacy then actually generates a series of objects along that animated sequence to create the fence post as we see it here.